This is Pine Hill Park. Situated in the outskirts of Rutland, Vermont, Pine Hill is a recreational park which is primarily for mountain biking and hiking in the summer, with fat biking, snowshoeing, and Nordic skiing in the winter. But I'm here for the mountain biking. While it may not be as large as other East Coast mountain bike destinations, Pine Hill offers 16 miles of single track across a total of 325 acres. Now, this is nowhere near the expansive 100 plus miles of single track at, let's say, Kingdom Trails, but it's more than enough for a couple of days of straight riding. There are plenty of trails I still haven't ridden, and every single ride I find a new trail which I hadn't seen that's such a thrill to ride. And I haven't even touched the other two sections of Pine Hill. Yep, that's right, there's still more to ride than just Pine Hill. So. You have Pine Hill, which is so much fun, with a great variety to fit all styles of riding. And then, there are the Redfield Trails, which extend off of Pine Hill. But wait, there's more! The Carriage Trail extends another 4 miles before going all the way to Proctor, Vermont. Whatever you're looking for, Pine Hill's probably got it. Tech, flow, jumps, cross country, you name it, they've probably got it. Now, in addition to the amount of trails, something that's strikingly different about Pine Hill when you compare it to other places is the sheer variety of trails. One second I'm climbing up some rocky tech and then the next I'm hitting some sick jumps made out of rocks. Every single trail was intensively planned and each trail is somewhat of a personality to it. There are these small bits, whether it's a techie climb or a quick descent, that just make each trail unique and make each trail that much more fun to ride. Might I add that most of these trails were cut by hand, and this means that every single section of trail has these small features that can help add to the personality and character of the trail. Well, relative to the trail that is. There's a mix of cross country and single track scattered throughout Pine Hill. Depending on which type of trail you're on, it's those small hand-cut things that just make the trail that much more fun. I've noticed this when both riding and building trails. It's much easier to focus on the small things on a trail, like a lip made out of rocks or a quick transition from a fast straight to a tight steep corners. These small things are best done by hand, and the character of the trail drastically improves. However, most machine cut trails have much larger and smoother features than hand cut trails. Whether it's flow or tech, the stuff you find at a bike park is usually much larger than single track. Larger berms and rocks and stuff like that. That's one of the best parts about bike parks in my opinion. But the thing is, when there's no lift to take you up the mountain, a hand cut trail is tons more fun to ride when you have to bike up. Now, Pine Hill has tons of small unique features scattered across the whole park. They've got rock slabs, rock rolls, rock jumps, rock drops, and even a rock cliff. Well, it's not just all rock features. There's still berms, rollers, and drops. Oh, and also wood berms, too. Oh, yeah. I've had so much fun at Pine Hill that it's one of my go-to destinations right now. Well, compared to Mount Peg, which is much steeper and has much larger features, which I would also highly recommend if you want to do some good Vermont single track, Pine Hill has significantly more flexibility in terms of which trails you can do. I will most likely make a video on Mount Peg, so stay tuned for that one. So back to biking. Pine Hill has tons of options for routes in which you can take as most of the trails run in both directions, but we all know the one going down is the better direction. However, there is one particular route which lets you really experience what I call the hidden gems of Pine Hill. This is a route which gives you a great overview to the best that Pine Hill has to offer. Well, in my opinion that is, and feel free to adjust it however you'd like. To begin, Feel free to take a couple of laps in the small skills area before heading out. It's got a couple of rollers and a small drop to mess around on. After you're all ready to go, head towards the first uphill, Escalator. This brings you across a sweet wood bridge, and you'll go past a large boulder which you can rock climb if you feel like it. 
From here, you'll take Pond Road, which is essentially a fire road, or access road, or whatever you want to call it. It brings you out towards Rocky Pond. However, it's not that much fun to just go up a fire road, so you can split off to the right on a cross-country trail called Birches, and then take a left onto Voldemort, which will bring you right back to the fire road, but it's a nice detour. From here, there are two options I would recommend. Either you can continue up the fire road, or you can take a small loop on V-Step, which is basically just a large rock cliff that you ride across of. In my opinion, it's a great introduction of what's about to come because you get a great view of the surrounding landscape. Whether you go down Vista or not, you will end right back up on the fire road either way. From there, you continue up for about a minute or two and then you'll veer right onto Underdog, a cross-country trail which is a couple of short uphills and downhills with one great view in between. The downhill sections on Underdog are very refreshing, because after those short uphills you can have 30 seconds or so of just relaxing downhill. Oh yeah, there's also a wood burn. Oh, yeah. Underdog lets out onto Rocky Pond, which is a great point to stop and grab a snack or just enjoy the view. Once you've gotten your granola bar or water, take Shimmer up towards Stegosaurus. Now, Shimmer dips down towards the lake, making it a very scenic and enjoyable ride. Halfway through, it splits into two routes, one going straight up and one winding around. The left side is a harder techie climb for about half a minute, and the right side continues the windy scenic nature of the trail. Now, at the top of Shimmer, You'll be greeted by a killer view to the right, which is another spot to take a little break and maybe grab some sweet shots of your bike or something like that. Right here is a great example of all the hidden things found around Pine Hill. Now, I'm in the middle of the woods, at the outskirts of Pine Hill, and I was going up Stegosaurus and I see this little sweet berm and roller to my left. Now, this was a small section on Overlook, which I just walked up and quickly sessioned. Okay. After that, I just hopped right back into Stegosaurus and kept on riding. Stegosaurus is one of my personal favorites at Pine Hill. It is a stupid fun cross-country trail. I like to ride more single track and park, but this trail was somehow so much fun, I've done it every single time I go to Pine Hill. It's a perfect blend of uphills and downhills, but it's also got tech climbs, descents, straight sections, and tight corners throughout the whole thing. It would always keep me on my toes, and I would have to be ready for the next section. Oh, and there are also a couple of fun bridges scattered throughout the trail. And this is just the beginning. So after Stegosaurus, it's best to take Strong Angel up to Jersey Turnpike. This climb is not too hard and it brings you up to the top of Broken Handlebar North. Now be sure to go on Broken Handlebar North and not Broken Handlebar South since Broken Handlebar North is much more fun in my opinion. Broken Handlebar North is one of the jump trails at Pine Hill. Well, it's not exactly a jump trail and the jumps are barely that large, but they are surely unique. Most of them are built out of rocks found in and around the trail, and you don't have that much speed since it's not crazy steep, but it's still plenty of fun and definitely special. Now, after getting to the bottom of Broken Handlebar North, there's one of the most fun features in my opinion at Pine Hill. This is a giant rock roll, however, it and the trail following it are not in the map and can be easy to miss. You continue straight from the bottom of Broken Handlebar, and you should see some warnings such as Caution Drop around where it is. Now, after doing the drop, you can continue along the brand new unmapped trail underneath. Although some of the features on it are interesting at best, and I'm not sure if they're even possible. But it's still fun to ride a fresh new trail. Now, this unmapped trail will bring you right to Sore Elbow, which you'll then take back up. It's a really short uphill, and only takes a couple of minutes, and it's pretty easy. Now, once at the top, I would suggest taking Sore Elbow. This is one of the first trails that I ever did at Pine Hill, and it's still so much fun. 
It's very simple and straightforward with just a couple of rollers and berms here and there. Now, the best part about this trail is a toilet bowl or whatever you'd call it partway through. There's nothing very special to it, it's just so much fun to ride. It very much could just be the sheer simplicity that just makes it that much fun. There aren't any huge berms or jumps, it's just simple single track at its finest. Okay, Sore Elbow leads to Remmer's Brush, which is a fast and straight trail with nothing much to it. It's a great follow-up to Sore Elbow's simplicity by adding a little bit of speed. Now, after blasting down that trail, there's one last climb left. You just take Watkins Road up to either Freefall or Halfpipe. Now, Freefall is self-explanatory, and it most literally just goes straight down. It's raw and fast, and some of the most eye-watering fun ever. Halfpipe is extremely unique, and not many other trails are like it. It combines those built-in rock jumps from Broken Handlebar, those straight goodness from Remmer's Brush, and a natural valley using walls as berms into one big single track mess. A good mess, that is. I wouldn't particularly call it a jump trail, neither would I call it a tech trail. It's just half pipe. It's its own kind of trail. Now, after either half pipe or free fall, whichever you plan to do, you can either go up for another lap by taking the fire road and exploring the much more that Pine Hill has to offer. Or you can take Exit Stretch, which is a brief trail heading back to the parking lot and pump track. This trail perfectly concludes all that was done before it. With swooping berms and not crazy speeds, it wraps up the day perfectly and finishes it off with a wood bridge. Now, that's my personal recommendation for a sweet loop at Pine Hill that shows you the best parts which it has to offer and can easily be adjusted to add other trails that you may want to ride. Pine Hill has tons to offer, and it's easy to get to those things. There are no complex routes or anything like that to get to the various types of trail offered. It's just so simple and such a blast to ride. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for sticking with it. I'm still getting used to editing softwares in general, and if you got this far, it might not be terrible. I'm going to try to continue to get more videos up and maybe have somewhat of an upload schedule. Now, through what's going on in the world right now, one of the best things to do is just get on a bike and ride or try something new. So if you've got a bike, it doesn't even have to be a full on mountain bike. Just get out and ride, whether it be at Pine Hill, another place, or even your backyard. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.